Kat here with a few pages from my writer's notebook. This morning, September 3rd, I began writing at 7.04 a.m., which is a little bit late for me. I started with a sudden fiction, which is just hitting the page and writing whatever comes up. The darkness crept up like a blanket and Ames drew it around his shoulders as if it were a shroud or a superhero's cape. This, this, he thought, is the way to go. Hold the dark close to myself and grip it tightly. Then it will never get away from me. I will always keep it in my grip and in my sights. He barely noticed when the chin that belonged to his body dipped onto the chest that contained a heart that was beating, but no longer reverberating with the life all around him. That was my sudden fiction, a very short little piece. Then I wrote a bunch of stuff that I'm not going to read aloud because it's too bleh. But I want to say, finish it up with, I, this was about yesterday. I came down with a bad headache while visiting friends. Thank God for blessed sunshine and a little quiet. My friend and I had a nice chat outside and she remarked about that she liked to watch the bees and the bugs that she was seeing. There's a whole world here, she said, right under us that we hardly ever think about. And then I went on, boy, and here I am supposedly working on my novel and I'm just writing about other things, ouch. Each week since summer day, summer day camp, I've been practicing this act of getting up and starting the day with writing and some semblance of real production, book or longer project wise. Something I did very much during my years of writing my first drafts of the Saigon, I'm sorry, of For the Love of Vietnam. And currently I'm working on the Saigon Diaries. So I want to read to you, I rewrote the first, the first section, the very first paragraph of the Saigon Diaries. Avery felt a drop of sweat slip down her cheek like a tear. She could just make out the armed guards inside the gates of her family's new home. She was crouched in the bushes next to the house, and though she was in the shade, it was hot, hot, hot. Why had her dad not told her that it would be so hot in Saigon? Avery felt a drop of sweat slip down her cheek like a tear. I really like that line. And I am determined to work through the manuscript that I started so long ago in 2013 and share it here as much as I can the process. So that is why I'm coming to you today with my writer's pages, notes from my writer's notebook. I am seemingly in at endless at writing about things and I'm working now more to go straight into it. Instead of telling you about writing, I'm telling you what I've been writing. So let me finish up with my writer's diary entry for this morning. Again, I start the day feeling as if I'm starting from scratch. Well, today's in, in a deficit due to how long yesterday took. It was a holiday after all. Um, but so now here I am again. Always I return here to this moment of assessment. Always I fall short. Finally, I decide that it is enough. I surrender. I look. I see. I act. I go outside into the backyard and look at what's under my feet. A whole world right there, just waiting for us. Just waiting for us to notice. And then I went back to work on the Saigon Diaries a bit. So those are words straight from my notebook. I get up in the morning. I take a little time to drink my coffee and look at the day. And then to the page. Many people are afraid of the blank page. I'm not so afraid of the blank page anymore, except that I'm afraid of what is beyond the blank page. My name is Kat Fitzpatrick. I'm widely read, widely written, and definitely interested in reaching out more. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I will be around to do more. Like, subscribe, comment, and I look forward to connecting. It is between the teller of the tale and the person whose ears are tuned to listening that the magic happens. Until next time, please take care.